Hey everyone! It's an incredibly gray day out today. I was feeling kind of down. Thought it was time to brighten things up a little. Help me have a sunny day in this winter day, snowing again. And one of the things that always brightens my day is working with bright colors. And I came across this little fish, it's an angel fish in um, a magazine. I've always loved drawing fish because they're fun and forgiving and free swimming in the water. And I have this wonderful fish here that's uh, another artist made out of felting, which is fun. My daughter gave me that because I love having fun and fish are amazing. So I'm going to use these two things for inspiration today. I'm going to work with oil pastels. Yay, oil pastels, lots of colors. I've got two old packs. This is an old, old pack that's been hanging around. Um, the pieces are small and broken, but they still work. And then I've got another pack here. A newer one, they're a little fatter and bigger, but lots of bright colors there. Uh, for canvas is a brown paper bag. And we've all got lots of those these days as everybody's using them and handing them out. Um, you can cut it open or you can just work right on the bag. Um, in this case here, I wanna take away the folded part. So I think I am gonna use my scissors and just cut the sides open on this. Exacto knife will be much quicker and I will just stick it in the folds here out that knife and bingo. Cut it very quickly. And there I've got a nice flat piece. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw a little frame into here. You can use a card and trace it. These are some old cards and stuff that I've done a long time ago. It's not a fish. It's a peach. Uh, but I'm just going to loosely trace that. So we'll use that as the outside frame area. I'll just grab a pencil and I'll do my drawing within that area. Reason being, um, I know I have a lot of envelopes and cards that are often four inches by six inches, and I thought I could use this drawing and send it as a card to somebody to brighten their day as well. And now we're gonna decide exactly how I want to uh, draw this fish if I want more than one fish, and I'm just gonna let the job show me the way. So the fish can basically be any shape. Uh, I'm using these for inspiration, but it might end up being something completely different. I'm going to do my fish swimming in this direction. Uh, I've generally learned that if you're uh, looking to the right in a photo, then it uh, dictates looking into the future. And if you've got to the left side, it's looking into the past. So this fish is swimming to the left. I'm going to take them and simply flop them Here's over. Here's a little piece of tracing paper. So this is an easy way to transpose an image. Hey everyone. Okay, so I'm going to grab my pencil again. Grab my pencil and just do a very quick tracing of this shape. Goes up like that. And you've got the dorsal fin and you've got the eye. And you've got these other wonderful stripes. So there's basically um, the shape of the angel fish. And then you can just simply take that and flop that. And there you go. And now you can see you've got the same fish swimming in the opposite direction. All right, so we're ready to go here. I'm going to basically draw this shape. And now I'm going to get into my colors, thinking about what color I want the background to be. If I actually want it to be in blues to represent water, then if I have a blue fish, uh, you're not going to see it very well. So I'm going to probably use some yellow, bring sunshine into my day. If you want to see what the oil pastel looks like on the paper, just um, put a little scribble on the outside of your frame. 
here we go. I've selected the yellows and their oranges, a little bit of pink, and we're just going to fill in the fish. I've decided to do some green stripes and a teal green for the fins and eye. I'm going to add some bits of seaweed coming up first. I'm gonna put in some white waves first, and then here we go, seaweed is growing. I'm gonna use a couple different greens, put in a bit of coral here as well to add some interest to my water scene. Our fish is looking happy. All right, I'm going to turn the paper and work at it in this direction, and I'm just gonna add in a whole lot of blue all around. Now these pastels that I'm using here, this is actually a water soluble oil pastel. And that's going to prove to be very interesting because this is water. I'm actually going to use a bit of water, especially for the water part here. I'm adding a few different tones of blue and even some purple into the water. All right, let's get out my watercolor brush and hold that up for you there so you can see that. You can certainly knock the side of it somewhere, collect all the little bits of oil pastel. I'm gonna skip ahead on the video here. I'm gonna take the time to finish activating all this blue water. And you can take your time to do that on your own painting. You can stop the video and come back to it. And then we'll finish off the fish and the seaweed and see what we've got at the end. We have a fish that's swimming in water. And what I've noticed is that in this area here, I had a little bit of darker here, which is shaded, which is really helping this part of the fish pop out and really gives some depth to the water. I'm going to take, which I think was this dark greenish color, and do the same thing around the outsides, um, especially in the underneath areas, and make that a little bit darker there. We'll blend that in and hopefully that is all going to, oh, you can see it already, even just with the outline how that's helping the fish pop out. So let's get back to our stripes of color here. We've got a nice bright green happening. You can use your finger for blending. Your finger does tend to get quite messy. Got these other tools here that we can use for blending. This one here is uh, called a blending stump and it is just compressed paper fiber. You can actually, I think, sharpen them as well if they're getting a little dirty on the end or clean them off that way. So you can do some blending with that. I'll show you that in a second. And then this one here is actually called a tortillion and it is rolled up bits of paper, which basically can be used in the same way. I prefer the, the, the blending stump just because I think it's a little smoother. Um, definitely the friction and the heat that is created when you are uh, pushing down on the pastel helps them blend. But as you see here, I'm going to use this and I'm just going to blend in and it makes it nice and smooth. Blend the little bits of color into there, creating a nice smooth transition of the different colors. See the difference between where I've blended the colors here as opposed to here where it is still just the raw pastel. So we're going to blend up those other areas. Also if you're working into a painting your hand, your side of your palm here is going to get covered so you might want to just take a scrap of paper and put that over top of the painting. In this case here, I'm just gonna use this scrap of, that I've got handy here. So I can just put that down. You wanna make sure you don't drag that across, but I can just put that down and push on it with my palm, set my palm down there, and then I won't wreck what's underneath it, and I won't get all the oil pastels 
onto my palm, keeping it clean so when I move it around the painting, it is not going to affect it and leave little bits of color in areas that I'm not really wanting it to. So here we go. I have to be a little bit careful down there. We need a little bit more yellow here. Adding some yellow again. And it's just turning very rich and very deep between the yellow and the orange areas that I have blended the colors together. And then there's the stripes here and the extra little fins that have not been treated that way yet and neither has the seaweed. And we're going to get to that in just a second. I've just finished blending in the coral section here and I need to add some texture into that. I would love to see some pinks and purples in there. So I'm just going to put some little marks in there just to give some variations. A little bit of trouble getting it to adhere, adhere to it. And maybe some specks of purple, that's working better. And now we're going to just blend those in as well. Starting first with the lighter pinker color. And there we go. So we're getting some definition of some different colors, adding some depth to the coral. Finishing this, I'm going to use just a scraper and I've got, it's actually an old tool for breaking open nuts that I've had for many years. You can get old dental tools, with a really sharp tip on it. Maybe that will work well. And I'm just going to use a squirrely pattern just like a scribble to... and so sometimes I will just use a, uh, a tool like this just for scraping. You can use a pen that has run out. Blend the stripes. So again I'm going to want to put down a piece of paper so that I don't muck up my hands and just blending in these colors together so that they're nice and smooth. There is a close-up of the coral and I finished blending in the greens here on the stripes of the fin. There is a little close-up. You can see that the scraping, I've outlined that fin and I've added a little bit of shading in here along the bottom to give it some dimension and uh, I just used a purple and then blended that in as well with the blending stick. We're going to do some details around the eye, make that eye pop a bit. Definitely some finishing here on the fin at the back and then finishing off the seaweed pieces. Played with the eye a little bit and as you can see I've added some white detail lines everywhere. Well, a bunch of spots and I'm going to blend those in a bit and see what that looks like and definitely add a highlight of white into the eye. Just using the blending tool to blend those whites in. That's looking a little better and you can see here what's going to happen when I blend these in here onto the tail, giving it some detail there of those special features and I think I'll put an outline on there but it's looking good and I definitely need to do some work on those lips What's happening maybe I'll just have to oh there we go that works now put a little bit of highlight on the top lip there see if you just kind of use the edge of your pastel there I think that's working so we've got a nice colorful fish happening. We've got the details and now I'm just going to finish off the seaweed. Our fish is swimming. I've blended in the uh, seaweed, worked in some more colors with the blending stump into the uh, water and done some work with the eye. I'm happy with that. Now I've noticed there is some ridges if I look back at the original, there's some spikes on the back here in yellow. So I'm just going to, with my scraping tool, add some detail there. 
going to be very tiny, but there happens to be some yellow underneath there, so that's worked out. Oil pastels, like oil paints, do need to actually take time to dry. So it's good if you leave them in the open air for a few days or a week or a month, whatever. And I think he's looking pretty happy. I'm happy with our fish. Maybe we should put our other fish here. Our anemone down here. And we drawing that has made me happy and smile. I'm going to trim that out, cut it out, and send it to somebody in the mail. See you again soon.